Now, um, I know I asked a question, but another subject, MMJ, hormone benzos and intolerance, especially for sleep. Um, yeah, you're probably talking about marijuana. Um, okay, yeah. So Shelly, um, good question um, when it comes to, and, and that's Lulu Love, which I know is Shelly. <laughs> uh, I know her and she, she asks lots of questions, um, which is fine, which is good, good, good. I thank you and appreciate it and I appreciate your support. She comments a lot and I appreciate that. Um, so Shelly, when you're talking about marijuana while on benzos and intolerance, especially when it comes for sleep, um, you've got to be careful with marijuana. It's best to do medical marijuana just so you can get the strains um, so that you know what you're getting right because there's so many strains out there and you can end up with um, like too many uh, like sativa based strains where you're now wired and you're more anxious maybe more paranoid um, where you would need something more like indica when it comes to sleep and and helping with those problems specifically as well as cbd and leveraging cbd more than thc um, is actually shown to be more beneficial. And so products that have higher contents of CBD um, is actually um, better than those with THC because THC is psychoactive um, and can have very similar consequences as benzodiazepines and, and even the psychotropic medications where it may work at first and a lot of people experience this. This is why I don't like using marijuana for anxiety or any other, you know, uh, mental health symptom, because this is what happens. They use it. It starts working fine. They think, oh yeah, this is cool. You know, my anxiety is great. You know, it's, um, I'm, I'm feeling good. I can sleep. And then the same thing happens like a rebound symptom where just like the benzos, it stops working. Now you have a rebound symptomology. You try switching up your brand. You try switching up whatever, you know, your marijuana in general. Um, you try to increase maybe how much you're taking and you just keep having a reactive um, syndrome and that's like when you hit withdrawal tolerance and um, that happens with benzos it happens with antidepressants it happens with anything that's psychoactive a psychotropic medication which if you're using marijuana as such is going to have those types of effects another thing about marijuana that I don't like is, and this is the THC part, everything that I'm talking about is THC based. So CBD oil, CBD based, like non psychoactive, very healing, you know, not going to have these issues. T anything with THC, which oftentimes the, um, even those CBD products that you get out in the market will have some THC and not all of it is, um, the same, but anyhow, um, that component you know, creates this dynamic of neuroadaptation, eventually stops working, then you end up with this rebound phenomenon, and now it's hard to get off of it. But the other thing I was gonna mention is cyclical vomiting. And cyclical vomiting is nasty. It's a nasty side effect, and it may not happen the first time you take it. It may happen 10 years from now. And then you're like, what the heck, I can't stop vomiting. And you go to the emergency room and you think it's abdominal issues, and it turns out it's your marijuana. It's the THC. It can cause cyclical vomiting. And then when that happens, forget it. Um, anytime after that, you're going to have a really hard time tolerating marijuana and end up with cyclical vomiting just about every time you take it. So, um, and that is hard because at that point you have to stop and then you end up very depressed. I mean, people say there's no withdrawal from marijuana. Um, ask someone who's experienced marijuana withdrawal and they'll tell you that's a lie um, because you get severely depressed, severely anxious, and you have all these rebound symptoms that surface after stopping marijuana. So be careful with marijuana. I'm not a proponent. People will argue um, that with me and, and we, you know, we'll go back and forth, whatever, but I've seen the bad side of marijuana um, all too often and it's hard to help those people. So, okay. From Butterflies 2 from Minnesota. My doctor wants me to do a direct switch from Lexapro 7.5 milligrams, okay, to Zoloft 25 milligrams. Been taking Lexapro for eight months now and finally less anxious, but experienced lack of motivation and dull emotions. Thoughts on this, thank you. Hmm, okay. 
You can do a direct switch from Lexapro 7.5 to, to Sertraline 25, actually. You don't have to do a cross taper with that because it's like the same, pretty much same dose you're going to from almost lowest dose of Lexapro to lowest dose of, of Sertraline. So shouldn't be an issue with that. However, um, I want to mention this dull emotions thing. If that's the case, oftentimes this is the serotonin causing this like dulling of emotions. And, and so again, root causes, um, I hate to keep drilling down on that, but please, um, when I see something like this, I'm highly suspicious of perhaps we didn't go through a lot of the root causes. And oftentimes I'm thinking methylfolate, um, you know, problems, methylation problems, um, vitamin D, um, and B12. When I see this dulling of emotions with serotonin, those are the things that pop up in my mind right off the bat. Um, hypothyroidism can also, or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, um, which can lead like that would be chronic Hashimoto's can also cause this dulling of emotion thing. Um, but those are the things that pop up in my mind first. If that has been ruled out um, correctly, and that's not the case, and you're wanting to go the route of psychopharmaceutical drugs, then when we're looking at motivation and the dulling of emotions, you could either switch to something like bupropion, which would be very helpful in that regards, or add a little bit of bupropion. When you add bupropion to either of these medications, you do have to be careful with the inhibition. And so you wanna keep the SSRI, the, either the Lexapro or the Zoloft at a low dose because bupropion will inhibit the metabolism of them, more so with sertraline than with Lexapro. Um, so you're, um, you know, 10 and under as far as milligrams go. And the Zoloft, you can go as high as about 100 milligrams, but don't go any higher than that. Um, because you can go up to 200 um, as a max with Zoloft. But anyhow, that's something to discuss with your provider uh, about. Um, now, some people, if you're having, um, you know, like you mentioned, the anxiety piece, maybe a direct switch to bupropion may not be helpful work for you, depending on why, like what your anxiety symptoms are, where they're derived from, etc. Because you may get um, stimulated on going like directly from an SSRI to an NDRI, which is what bupropion is. Um, and so maybe just adding a little bit of bupropion um, to help with this dulling of, of um, motivation and dulling of the emotions um, can be helpful with that SSRI in place. So you may not have to switch from Lexapro, especially if it's helping your anxiety, not necessarily. But again, like I said, check for those root causes, please, and make sure that you're also looking at your diet, your lifestyle. Those things are important. Don't shrug them off um, like many people do because you want a quick fix because if that's the case down the road, you're gonna end up with a lot of problems, treatment resistance, etc. That's what all of that leads to. So be careful with that. Don't ignore making those lifestyle changes and assessing for root causes. Okay.